Welcome back, Breakaway Wealth. I'm your host, Jim Oliver, and with me today is my co-host, Nick Costco. Welcome, Nick. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to, to uh, meet again and talk about uh, banking at the you and me level. Banking at the you and me level. I've heard that a few times from Mr. <laughs> Nash over and over again, and I always loved when he said that because he's so passionate about that. But Nick, why in this environment that um you know that nelson didn't see these last two years with uh this covid dilemma i'm not going to call it a pandemic i'll call it a dilemma uh what why nick why do we need to bring the banking to the you and me level because the people in charge just aren't responsible enough you know so nelson would talk about any any government program winds up doing the complete opposite of what it was intended to do. And, yeah. you know, like the Federal Reserve story is, hey, they need to stabilize the, the economy, right? By, by controlling the interest rates. Yeah. Well, come on. We have to look back at the, the, you know, we're over 100 years, 1913, the Fed Reserve was created. You know, so we look back in these boom bust cycles in their infinite wisdom of controlling these interest rates, these boom and bust cycles keep getting bigger and bigger. So, you know, it's, it's having the opposite effect of its intended mission. Right. And that's what Nelson, you know, neither of us can do his Southern drawl worth a darn. I'd love yeah. to way that could flip I it. wish I could. <laughs> it was so perfect how he, how he would say that. We got to bring it to the you and me level. You know, and when I when I tell Justin Kraft that Southern draw, he says, "What do you mean that Southern draw?" <laughs> so, I'm just kidding. Um, so, Nick, how much money did they increase? How did how much did they increase the money supply last year? Yeah, four hundred percent, roughly, give or take a, a couple percent, about four hundred percent, and then we continue doing that more this year. And yeah, I mean, do you think it's going to be more or less this year? Well, I saw our uh, president's, you know, spending proposal, and I think was it pushing two trillion. Just that's that's on the surface what it is, right? Yeah. We all know it, it winds up significantly more than that. So, it's it's the erosion of our dollars. It's the erosion uh, of our purchasing power. It's it's for go read his book and the, the law because he talks about legal plunder. And I feel like right now we're being plundered. They're plundering our money. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's theft, right? It's theft, that's exactly right. It's legal theft though. Yeah, and they play the game so well, we don't even realize there's a game going on. I, I saw a little thing the other day, they were like, oh, but inflation's only 2%. And then there was like the, the flip to it. They're like, yeah, but that bag of chips that you pay, four bucks for it used to have, I don't know, 20 ounces of chips in it. Now it's got 14 ounces of chips in it and it's still the same price. So it's all sleight of hand, right? And just look around and pay attention to what your grocery bill's doing. What's the target, you know, checkout counter cost you for the same things year over year. I mean, we've seen numbers, Jim, you know, that on the low side, it's 10% inflation. And on the high side, it's, it's more than 20%. Yeah. Um, and so it's just, it's not reasonable to expect that the same people that created the problem are going to magically solve the problem. And that's why Nelson would say, we just got to bring it back to the you and me level. We have to be in control of it. So what do we own during these times when the, when the dollars in our pocket are becoming worth less every single second and in a, at an accelerated rate becoming worth less? And we're being taxed with a stealth tax because yeah. that's what's happening when the dollars in your pocket are worth less and less and less. It's like you're being taxed. Now, Congress isn't approving this tax. You don't know what's happening. Like Nick said, it's, it's, it's something that you don't even realize is happening. But once you realize what is happening, <laughs> then what do we do in this environment, Nick? Yeah, well, we'll know what to do once we understand the problem. And, and what we do is we take control. And, and we become our own our own bankers. What we do is we we need to buy assets. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right, and we need to. And the reason that we need to buy assets is, let's say we own real estate. Well, we can always raise rents 
And as the inflation happens, the value of our real estate goes up, right? So we're combating inflation versus instruments, the instruments that are in dollars inside of our mutual funds or stock accounts or bond accounts, they're in dollars and those dollars are becoming worth less every single day. And so we, we assets, not instruments, right? Yes. Assets, not dollars. And yes. so, um, and there are tax advantages. So when we look at infinite banking, it kind of looks like this, okay? This is what we just call the ledger talk, right? At Create Tailwind. So let's just talk through this, Nick, and you know, stop me more than I normally would just flow. Stop me and let's talk about it. So we have this policy, okay? This insurance policy, and it's designed for cash value. Now, by the way, it has death benefit. It has illness protection. It has all of those things but it's designed to be super efficient cash value wise. And it's, there, there, there are insurance policies out there that you will, you will see on the, on the interweb that, that look good on the surface, but we want something that works for the long haul, not for the short haul, okay? Yeah, we're not gonna project what might happen. We're gonna show you under current market conditions, what would happen, what will happen and guaranteed what will happen worst case scenario so so and and by the way we're going to buy this policy from a mutual insurance company and the reason a mutual insurance company is because policyholders own mutual insurance companies not stockholders and insurance companies are required by law at the end of the year to distribute the profits to the owners so we want to be an owner now, one of the things when we buy a policy from a mutual insurance company is we have a contractual right to take an interest only loan. This is you or us, okay? And now that interest only loan, what that means is it's like a line of credit. There's no payback schedule or amortization. It's not structured like your car payment or your equipment loan, okay? It's interest only. All right, Nick, so let me ask you a question. <clears throat> if I would loan you, this is kind of how this loan works. If I would loan you $100 million today and your only obligation is that in one year, so one year from today, you got to pay me $5 million, would you take the loan? Yes. And the reason, audience, that Nick says yes is because he knows what to do with the money, right? Okay, so Nick, let's say that it that you turn that around and you've made me the same offer, which by the way, I'm open to, okay? It, we can work it out after the show. But, so I'm gonna take your 100 million and then I'm gonna take somebody else's 80%. So I'm gonna use the 100 million as a 20% down payment and I'm gonna use somebody else's 80%, okay? Hopefully the seller of the property, okay? So let's just say that I, I get the seller to agree. So I'm going to go buy $500 million worth of real estate. So I'm going to go buy somebody's entire portfolio. Somebody successful, by the way, entire yeah. portfolio. And let's say that I can get 25% cash on cash. Okay. okay. Now, some people might say, well, it's 20, Jim, or it's 20. I mean, I had somebody the other day say that they don't look at anything under 27. Okay. So I'm just using 25 as an example. So I got a hundred million bucks, my $500 million property. Okay. Your hundred million dollars is going to net me 25 million bucks. Yep. I'm going to call you a year from today. And I'm going to say, Nick, I flew to Louisville to buy you lunch and give you your check, you know? And, and so I'm going to get together and you're going to say, Hey, Jim, you want to pay any principal? And I say, Nope. <laughs> See you next year. Because I got 20 million and I only had to pay you five, right? Wait. Okay, so let's go back to our example. So this interest-only loan, this is where insurance agents get confused. Because when I take this loan, my cash value doesn't go anywhere. All they do is they put a lien on my cash value. So I can't take their money and my money and run. 
Okay. But now I have their money, other people's money, OPM. I have two things the bank wants. I have use and control. Why does the bank want use and control of money? Because whoever has the use and control and the control of it makes the money. Yep. The bank is in business to make money. Okay, but now I've got the insurance company's money and I'm going to take it and I'm going to, I'm just going to use real estate in this example oh, for yeah. the first one. First question. Yeah. Before you, go, before you go there, what'd that process look like of getting the loan from the insurance company? Good question. It looked like this. I called them up and said, send me my money or I sent their uh, <laughs> a signed form in that basically says, send me my money. No application process? No application process, no approval, no submitting P&Ls monthly, nothing like that. And why is that? That's, be, that's because it's a contractual right of ours to borrow up to 100% of our cash value. And it's right in the, in, in, in the, in the, spe, in, in the policy documentation, the contract, I have that right. And what kind of contract do we call that in the insurance world? It's a unilateral contract, which means I can change it. I can do, you know, I can make different changes, but they can't. Awesome. Okay. Right? So we got an interest only, unstructured loan, unstructured means audience that you get to set up the terms of the payback. Okay. The insurance company has a, has an interest rate that is stated. We know what that is. It's interest only. I don't have to pay it monthly. It's paid annually at the end of my policy year. And then me as the, as the real estate investor or business owner, because of the rhythm of our businesses, which we've covered before in the business owner cycle, you know, I may deploy this capital in this real estate opportunity, but I may not have any capital come back for six, 12, 24 months in that project. And because it's an unstructured loan, I don't have monthly payments that I have to dig out of my pocket to pay. I get to pay it when I want. So I get the ultimate freedom and control in that piece of the process. I don't get that at a commercial bank. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. So uh, when we buy real estate, we're buying it for a couple of different reasons, but we always normally have a focus. Like it could be on appreciation, right? That our assets are going to appreciate and or it's gonna cash flow, yep. okay? So when we earn this cash flow from this project, doesn't matter how much it is, well, it does, but not in this example, okay? <laughs> the cash flow goes back to you. Now I could redeploy it, let's say in real estate project number two, okay? Immediately, but if I pay anything back to the insurance company, dollar for dollar, any principal that I pay reduces my lien increases my net cash value available so I can do it all over again. And it reduces my interest that I'm paying the insurance company. Okay. So I go do it again and the cash flows. And maybe the next time I buy a business, right. And it cash flows. Now see how I'm getting this. And maybe the next time, I, um, I, I buy some more real estate, let's just say, just keep it simple. Okay, these are all cash flowing assets, okay? Because I'm buying them and then they make me money. And I'm getting all of this money to flow back to me. And I'm getting it on an accelerated basis, right? Because I'm putting money into the insurance contract and then I'm deploying the insurance company's money to go buy all these assets. All right, so let's look at something here. Normally, if I had my money in an instrument like a checking account or a mutual fund or something like that, Nick, I choose this or I choose this. Yeah, but here, I get both. Yeah, Jim, I, for people listening, the first time that you're trying to wrap your minds around this, you know, we, we talked to a guy yesterday, he's 42 years old. And I said, hey, for 42 years, what you've been taught about money is that it's linear. It's either in your pocket or it's in your broker's pocket. 
It's either in your pocket or it's at the grocery store paying for your groceries. It's a, it's or in your pocket or buying the real estate investment. Okay. And it's a paradigm shift in our thinking, Jim. I mean, you and I've talked to countless clients that they're already doing this and they still haven't had that light bulb go off that my money didn't leave my account. And, yeah. and, and then, Sometimes it trips me up to hear that, but I have to remember, listen, it, we're not healed in a day, right? 42 years of noise that is very sophisticated noise. The noise has become more sophisticated now than ever before. It's, it's designed to fool you. No doubt. Right? And people line up to be fooled now. Because once you understand this and once you get it, then you think, then you get to the question that people ask a lot is why doesn't everybody do this, right? And, and the people that do know about it and people that have money to capitalize, they all do it once they get it, okay? Because now, so you get both. Okay, so by the way, um, there's somebody in the audience I know that was an accounting major and they said, they're, they're saying, Jim, your, your, your ledger is backwards. I already know it's backwards, okay? It's not an accounting ledger. It's just the ledger. Maybe we need a different name. Maybe it's the, the players in the play. Nick, but, but so just know before you put in the comments that my ledger's backwards, I already know that. Um, so, okay, but think about this, Nick. Okay, I have the policy. It has a rate of return, right? Yeah. This is a, by the way, a tax-free rate of return, the growth, right? If you use okay. it the way we, we coach you to use it. Absolutely, okay, over here, I have a rate of return on the growth of the asset, right? So my appreciation. Appreciation, component. right? And then I have all this cash flow. So I have rate of cash flow. This is the name of so, the game right there. So I have rate of return, rate of cash flow on the asset side. And I get the rate of return inside the insurance contract and the tax protection. And then the Bible says a good man leaves a inheritance so we'll say a good person, okay, leaves an inheritance. So I have a legacy rate of return. So I get all of that. And I'm in control. Whoever's in control of the money does what, Nick? It makes the rules. They make the money. So instead of letting somebody else control your money, you control your money. Now, what do you have to be able to do? Where's the personal responsibility in this? Okay, it's right here. How do I find the assets? Okay, it's part of what this show does is that we're not recommending anybody, but we're showing what other people are doing, everything else, right? So there's opportunities to learn, but this is where, this is, this is a participatory sport, okay? So the assets, the policy we're gonna set up for through create tailwind we're going to do all that for you and because the insurance company compensates us to set up that insurance contract you get this part you get coached on this part for free forever okay so which out of all of this you have these three circles the assets the policy and your behavior People on the internet, Nick, they want to focus on the policy, yeah. right? Which yeah. tells me that they don't ever do this because what do we know it is? What's the most important circle? The, the behavior circle. Absolutely. The behavior circle. This is number one. Yeah. Okay. That's where we're going to coach you. And um, Nick, anything to add to this? No, I think we have to we have to be willing to rethink our thinking. And, yeah. And, and right now, in the, the climate of this country, people are entrenching in their opinions, like yep. I've never, frankly, seen before. And, but, but I, there is we have we have so many people coming to us saying, "Wait a second, I I, I think I'm seeing a lot of noise. I think that what is being said to me." It is not in my best interest. I feel like people are waking up and they are willing to rethink their thinking in a way that I frankly um, not seen before in my career working this with you. 
um, we're not having a lot of questions. It's kind of funny, like why? Like, right. oh, yeah, we were just talking about this recently. Uh, who's coming to us, they're, they're already rethinking their thinking. They're just looking for the solution because they've recognized the problem. And uh, I feel like that, that pool is growing, yeah, which, is, which is fantastic. And, um, you know, I just en encourage people to keep taking those steps to uh, rethink their thinking. You know, uh, I, what I'm really encouraged by is the young people. Yeah. Young people are not buying into that noise that I put money in a government plan, I wait 40 years or 30 years or whatever, and then I live off of that and I go down to Florida or Arizona and I, and I live in the villages and play golf every day. Yeah. By the way, nothing wrong with living in the villages, nothing wrong with playing golf every day. But <laughs> those uh, most of the people that I know that have really security in that, quote, retirement have a pension. Yeah. So what does a pension do? Well, it, it just feed, feeds you money. You get, I mean, I don't know really what you're asking there. So, so. It, it pays you every month guaranteed. Yeah. Right? Guaranteed as, as strong as the fund is, right? But, but let's just say it's guaranteed. But it's not like you could run out of money when you have a pension. You get that for the rest of your life. And the pension manager, if they've done their job well, is, is going to make sure that there's enough money in the pension fund to pay out all of the people that are getting benefit from that, right? Sure. Okay, so most people don't have a pension. Only 19% of the United States has pensions. Most of those are government workers, yep. right? Okay, there are exceptions to that rule. But what could you do to make sure that you never ran out of money? How about if you had an ever-increasing pool of money instead of a decrease? appreciating pool of money yeah, yeah now definitely. wall street wants you to build up a pool of money and then depreciate it over time or live off of the proceeds okay and they get to live off the proceeds yeah. they want to live off the proceeds too they want to partner with you with that here we want you to buy assets because the assets if you buy good assets over time are going to appreciate in value provide cash flow and those are the two things that we want. We want cash flow that's increasing and increasing enough to at least keep up with inflation so that our lifestyle never changes. Yes. Yeah, so right. Just remember, motion's a law of God. Okay. When we put money and we just lock it up in prison, that's not keeping our money in motion. And what we're seeing right now. The government actually the reason the ins the interest rates are so low is they want you to put the money in motion okay they want you to put it you know then there's this whole faction that wants you to put it in quote unquote motion with them on wall street but what we're seeing here is what jim's outlining is if we put it in motion with real estate and businesses and taking taking control of the banking function at the ume level then we can keep up with this printing press that's happening we can we can outpace that that uh, are eroding dollars. And that's really what it comes down to. Um, Jim, what I would say to, to our audience is, you know, there's a, we have a lot of resources on our YouTube channel. There's resources on our website. Uh, if you go to createtailwind.com, click on contact us. Uh, it costs nothing to sit down and have a meeting with us. It costs nothing. It costs you very little. If you want to go to infinitebanking.org and buy Nelson's book, uh, Becoming Your Own Banker, it, it's, it's truly the best resource for understanding the depth of this right here it's it's only a 92 page book uh, big word small font something even i could understand uh when i read it and um that's that's what i would recommend people do but but dig in and, and learn how to break break away uh from this current system that we have that's a great point nick and that's a good place to wrap it up and just remember like inflation is like a lion chasing you <laughs> and remember, you don't have to outrun the lion. You just have to outrun the slowest person that the lion's <laughs> chasing, right? So, so what does that mean that you got to break away? You got you to gotta start thinking and you got to take control yourself because the government is not going to do it for you. You know, yeah. if you're watching those certain news channels that you think the government is going to do this, and then also you um, think that the wealthy in the United States should take care of everybody else and the productive, then go read the book for, for this episode, the recommendation. 
and people that read it, I don't even care if you read the summary, okay? Because you're going to hate me if you get the whole book because it, it is, a, it, but you know what book I'm talking about, Nick? Yeah. What, the creature? Atlas Shrug. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. That's- so if you go read that book, that will show you what's going to happen if all, all of us, if you just keep on plundering from the productive people in the world. Jim, uh, yeah. you know you know why the gazelle survives the chase of the lion? Huh? No, because he's committed. All right. He's committed to survival and he won't give up. And, and I think that there's a lot of people that are sort of interested in breaking away and, and they don't really do it and they don't really survive the gazelle doesn't survive if he's just interested in surviving he has to be committed and there's a huge difference between being committed and being interested you know i i i love that nick you know i was watching one of those nature shows i don't remember something on netflix and there was a lion chasing a warthog okay (laughs) now i'm just telling you this did not look good for the warthog you know what the warthog did he turned around Oh yeah. And he charged the lion. Awesome. You know what? The lion was confused. (laughs) The lion was, that doesn't happen. That's no, wait a minute. This is not how this is supposed to play out. Look, you're my lunch. Just run. I'll make it, you know, you put up a good fight and then I'll just take you down and then you're dead. The word high said, you know, that doesn't work out for me. So I'm going to just turn around and charge at you and see what you do. And guess what? The lion was confused and went, there's got to be an easier lunch than that. I mean, somebody else has got to be easier. So don't be an easy lunch for the <laughs> lion. Don't let inflation devour you. Yeah, that's Take a that's action. Breaking, breaking habit patterns right there. The, the warthog broke the lion's habit pattern. Yeah. And he, and he won. So take, take, his, take his out, Jim. All right. Till next time. If you want to get more information about infinite banking, and you know, not that we talk about infinite banking all the time on this, we talk about breaking away from the herd. Nothing good happens in the herd. Okay, that is not where you're going to find happiness and progress and satisfaction in your life. You got to take control. We can help you. Go to createtailwind.com. Go to Create Tailwind on YouTube and check some of this stuff out. If it doesn't make sense to you, it doesn't make sense. No problem. Till next time, Nick. Thank you for joining me. Break away from the herd. Nothing good happens in the herd, Nick.